journey, we speak to the West Yorkshire man at the centre of a national ruling after an incident on a first bus to Leeds. Now, bus companies will not be required by law to force parents with buggies to make way for wheelchair users. This follows a ruling from the Court of Appeal coming out of a judgment right here in Leeds. Doug Pawley from Weatherby was denied access to a first bus to Leeds when a woman with a pushchair refused to move. Mr Pawley had attempted to board the bus in Weatherby, visiting his parents in Leeds back in February 2012, and he says he will now be applying to the Supreme Court to see if they will hear his case. Well, I was catching the bus across the Pennines to see my parents who live over Manchester Way, uh, live in Weatherby, so I caught the bus from Weatherby to Leeds. But there were problems because there was somebody already in the wheelchair space with a buggy. So the driver turned around and asked her if she would shift and she just said no. So I was left at the bus stop. The bus left without me. I wasn't allowed on. And um, I had to catch a later bus. I had to push myself across the centre of Leeds. And I missed the train. It was really late. But, you know, that's just a one-off instance. You have to hang a discrimination case off a one-off instance. But it was bringing the principal to court, really. We've had any number of problems. I live in a care home with 17 other people who also have problems on the buses. And I know lots of other disabled people who also have similar problems on the buses. So it's taken as an example case, if you like. So you elected to take this to, to county court because at the time the company had a policy of requesting rather than requiring people to move. Presumably you want it to, to be law that it is a requirement. Yes, these are wheelchair spaces. They are called such. They're set out in the Public Service Vehicle Accessibility Regulations uh, based around the size of a wheelchair. Um, they were put in because disabled people campaigned for them to be put in in the 1990s, chained themselves to buses. They are meant for wheelchairs. I don't have a problem with them being used by other non-disabled people when um, wheelchair users don't need them. But ultimately, they're wheelchair spaces, you know. And whilst I have sympathies with people with buggies and do believe that public transport should be made accessible for everybody, ultimately they're wheelchair spaces and if they're not available then wheelchair users can't travel. And I think I'm right in saying that you're now planning to, to take it further to Supreme Court as well. So we've applied for initially for permission to the Court of Appeal to um, take it to the Supreme Court. Unsurprisingly, they said no. I mean, we were asking if we could appeal their decision, which they just made. So now we've got to apply to the Supreme Court itself directly to see if they will hear the case. So. If the ruling does remain as it currently is, would you hope that you can appeal more to, to people's human nature, to, to make allowances almost a bit more for wheelchair users, regardless of what the, the, the official ruling might be? Yes, well, other companies are more clear about the space. You know, they say, this is the only space that a wheelchair user can travel in. If a wheelchair user needs it, please shift where it's not that directive or clear on first bus. Um, it's sad that you have to legislate to deal with the problems caused by other people's selfishness, really. I do agree. However, bus drivers have to deal with people being drunk, fighting, eating takeaway food, having loud personal stereos. You know, they deal with um, people's selfishness and the way it affects other passengers all the time. So in a way, this is nothing new it's just a variation on a the theme i guess well we've been getting reaction to the ruling brandon jones is first bus's head of external relations he joined me in our made in leeds studios earlier today so we've got the case of mr paul it's now been overturned by the court of appeal as a company you're happy with that decision well we felt we had to go to the court of appeal because there were two conflicting decisions in 2013 about the wheelchair priority space and we felt it was really important both for customers and for our drivers and for the wider bus industry to have some clarification um, about the uh, issue with the wheelchair priority space and because there were these two conflicting decisions in 2013 we felt it was the right thing to do to be able to ensure that we had some clarification on, on what the actual position was with regard to the wheelchair priority space. And of course this does affect bus services in and around Leeds, but of course this has a national impact as well, doesn't it? It does, and the wider bus industry have now got some clarification 
um, about this uh, about this issue. But it's it's as much about the wider bus industry as it is for for our passengers and particularly our drivers who were in a situation previously where our policy very clearly asked our drivers to uh, ensure that they uh, asked anyone who's currently in the wheelchair priority space to be able to vacate it for those that need it more. And the previous rulings were unfortunately contradictory and therefore we felt the appeal was necessary to, to get some clarity. Um, and the Court of Appeal have given us that clarity now, which means that we can ensure that our policy is communicated and, and thoroughly adhered to with all of our staff. Uh, and as far as this decision is concerned, uh, explain to us what the impact of that will now be. Okay, so we've got uh, about 900 buses altogether um, across West Yorkshire. Um, and it's, it's important for, um, for us to recognise that the bus industry has made some really important strides with regards to accessibility. It's very important for us and all of our customers. And all of our buses in Leeds, for example, now have the mobility access ramp at the front of the vehicle. Now that's a manual ramp and all of our drivers are trained to be able to exit the cab, mm. lower the ramp and then assist customers, uh, who, whatever their mobility needs are, to be able to get on and off the vehicle. With the investment in vehicles uh, and developments in accessibility now, uh, our vehicles have priority space areas for, for wheelchair users. Um, now, when there are no wheelchair users on the vehicle, then that space can be used by, by other customers. Now, what we ask our drivers to do is very firmly and strongly but politely ask customers who might be using that area to, to vacate it for those that need it more. And actually what we hope that this ruling might do is raise that awareness um, and really ask customers who are in that space to think about others who may need it more uh, and to vacate it so that we can carry as many people as possible and make our vehicles as accessible as we can. And of course the case of Mr Paul, it's been highlighted very much this week and featured today on the air but this does have of course uh, questions about is there enough seating or is there, can be anything be done to to put extra requirements put extra seating in so you know buggy users and disabled can both use the bus well, well there may be a situation where there's already a customer who uses a wheelchair in the space or the vehicle is full at which at which point it would be very difficult for us to be able to uh, to carry any more customers who are wanting to board the vehicle. But uh, generally speaking, uh, although vehicles can be busy, um, particularly at this time of year, uh, we believe that in the vast majority of cases that we'll be able to, to carry any customers that are willing to uh, and ready to get on the vehicle. And we've highlighted the case of Mr Pawley, which has now come to light, of course, but have you had previous issues with something similar to this in the past? Well, we, we carry... Um, nearly 100 million passengers' journeys a year uh, across West Yorkshire. Um, and, and the vast majority of those have a great experience. Wherever we don't get it right, we encourage customers to get in touch with us so that we can make improvements. Um, in some, some cases, there are some communication issues, both with our staff and with our customers. And we want to continue working with, uh, with accessibility groups and all of our customers and continue looking at where we can improve signage or communication or in some cases, training for our staff. Uh, and of course, you've mentioned it before, so many people now taking to the bus. I guess at this time of year, you were taking more and more passengers. Very, very busy time for, for first buses. Yeah, um, we certainly see an increase with, uh, with, with people who want to uh, come shopping or use the uh, fabulous uh, opportunities available in Leeds with theatres and cinemas, etc., and eating out. Um, and at these time of year as well, reliability can be a little bit more challenging because roads are a little bit busier as well. So we're working really hard to make sure that we run a reliable service as we can and continue to work with our partners at the City Council and the combined authority to, to run a reliable and, uh, and great service and provide that information as well through, through things like Twitter and our, our website to be able to update people on the current conditions with the bus services. That was Mr Jones speaking to me earlier. If you want to have your say on this story, you can get in touch. We're on Twitter at Made in Leeds. You can also email us on news at